good. Today's Sunny 95. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 619. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're bringing you an interview with our new associate, Dr. Mark Pagano. So you might remember that we had an associate uh, a little while ago, and he decided he wanted to be a root canal specialist. So uh, we put out a search, and we have found an awesome, awesome guy, and we're going to introduce you to him today. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. Okay, I want to remind you that in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Flores. And if you want to pre-program that number into your phone now, it's 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. The questions are easy. You'll probably know the answer, and there's a good chance to win some of those awesome flowers from DeSantis. Okay, so let me just uh, read you Dr. Pagano's bio. Dr. Mark Pagano has been an Ohio resident all of his life, growing up in Canfield, Ohio, before settling down in Columbus for both undergraduate studies and dental school. Dr. Mark graduated magna cum laude from Ohio State University with an honors diploma in biology and a minor in Spanish. In 2018, he earned his DDS from the Ohio State University College of Dentistry, graduating in the top fourth of his class and earning the Dean's Excellent Scholarship for the top ten applicants in his class upon admission. Dr. Mark spent his days in dental school helping plan the anatomy memorial service for donated cadavers for all professional schools, helping with Ohio State University's College of Dentistry admission interviews for incoming applicants, and volunteering around the community in an understaffed Medicaid dental offices and in various elementary schools to teach young kids underserved in underserved areas about the importance of oral hygiene. Now Dr. Mark has been out for about a year and a half and is excited to diversify his portfolio and skills to become a well-rounded practitioner. All right, so as I said, today is going to be your first chance to get to meet my new associate, Dr. Mark Pagano, and we're going to kind of start from the beginning because I want everybody to get to know him maybe before you even come in so you'll know what, what to expect. Okay, so anyway, hey, Dr. Pagano, thank you so much for uh, being on the show with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. And excited for you to get started. I guess your first day is going to be December 2nd, correct? Yes, it is. Yep, we're excited on this end as well. Good. So tell me a little bit about your background. I mean, I just tell me like what do the listeners need to hear what do our patients the people that might want to come and be seen by you need to hear okay yeah yeah so starting from the beginning right yeah yeah like uh, like when like uh when you were two no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well here let me, let me so where did you grow up okay so i grew up in a town called canfield ohio a lot of people don't really know it some can recognize the name uh, but it's near youngstown a suburb of youngstown ohio so we're looking in the northeast, my Pittsburgh, Akron area. When I grew up there until I was 18, and I skirted off to Columbus for college, and I've been here ever since. Okay. So at what point did you decide you wanted to be a dentist? How uh, old were you? I knew this question would come up. This question comes up all the time. <laughs> I, I feel like people love to ask this question to us as well because they're so intrigued about why we want to work in people's mouths every single day. Right, <laughs> right. It was even more intriguing when I was coming up because we didn't wear gloves and it was like, well, why do you want to have your fingers in people's mouths all day? But ironically, they never talked about that in dental school. They just assumed that it would be something we would do. But anyway, so how about you? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I didn't grow up with a uh, dentist in my family like I feel like a lot of our colleagues did. My mom was a doctor and she kind of 
help guide us to want to kind of pursue um, health care in some kind of way. So growing up, I always said I wanted to be a doctor. And then once I actually got to college and I started to shadow a couple physicians, I kind of felt like something was missing from the career and I couldn't really figure out what it was. And then I found dentistry through a friend who happened to be enrolled in the program at OSU. And I decided to go shadow um, a dentist and I actually kind of fell in love with the career, like watching her. Basically, I, I shadowed my family dentist from back home and I actually was interested in you know all the procedures she was doing and I was like amazed. Uh, you know, how she can transform a mouth just from, you know, a couple little procedures and it truly drew me in and I actually found something that, you know, I was interested in doing in the healthcare realm and I wanted to do something that I worked with my hands too because I like working with my hands, you know, it makes time go by faster and it's fun to see uh, something that you create with your own hands kind of, you know, blossom right in front of you. Yeah, yeah, you know what, your experience is very similar to mine. I was thinking about being a doctor and... Oh, really? Yeah. And my uh, family physician had told my mom, hey, you know, if your son wants to come and uh, talk to me sometime, I'll stay late after work. And uh, he can ask me questions about medical school and what it might be like to be a doctor. And uh, when she told him about that, I said, yeah, that sounds like fun. So... <laughs> Yeah. So we made an appointment. I went, and he, as soon as his nurse left, it was just he and I. And the very first thing he said to me is, you don't want to be a doctor. You should be a dentist. <laughs> and, I think so, and I'm like, what? I just kind of let it go in one ear and out the other, right, at that point? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I didn't really think much more of it. I went ahead and asked my questions, but it, did, it was kind of curious why he said that. And so, again, I didn't think much of it until about three months later, I was at a graduation party for my youngest brother. And uh, I was, uh, at that point, my sister was married to a, a gentleman that just finished medical school. He was training to become a radiologist. And oh, wow. so we had a permanent site at a campground. And so we're out there, and we're, you, know, you walk around with your a plate in your hand of what coleslaw and baked beans and maybe a hot dog or something potato salad so i'm coming around the corner he comes around the corner and we just happened to be at the same place at the same time so we got to talking and the very first thing he said to me was you don't want to be a doctor why don't you be a dentist and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like whoa this is two doctors telling me that i shouldn't be a doctor what's going on here right yeah. So then I decided, that, well, maybe I better look into this. I didn't let him know at that point. I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we just talked about other things after that. But then I thought, I better check. So Case Western Reserve, which is where I was going, had a program called Intercession. It's between like the Christmas break and when you start up winter. Yeah. And so because they were on semesters, it was like six weeks long or something or seven weeks long. And it gave, so they offered courses during Intercession. And you know how we tease about uh, uh, looking for a cake course like underwater basket weaving? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, during intercession, I think, is when you could take those courses. <laughs> but anyway, mine was called Dental Orientation. They put together this class called Dental Orientation, and it gave a chance for people like me and you, actually, to experience what it might be like to not only be a, dent a dentist, but to be a dental student. Okay? So they paired us up with dental students. And I went to their boring lectures, and I went to the preclinical <laughs> lab, and I went to the cadaver lab. I mean, I saw the you know the dead people as a, before I'd even applied to dental school. Oh, wow! And is that you know think about that? And so, and by the way, the fact that people donated their bodies to science was awesome, and I, I really yeah. encourage it. I learned so much, and I remember everything I learned in gross anatomy. Don't you? Yeah, so you do just, I, yeah. Because so you can picture it. Having a cadaver in front of you. Yeah, you can picture it in your head. Yeah, it's so cool. Like what a, what an aneurysm looks like when somebody dies from an aneurysm or something, or a pacemaker, you know, all these kinds of neat things. Okay, I'm getting off the subject. So they paired me up with a dental student. I went to a private dentist like you did. I uh, went to the lectures, the labs. I volunteered at the free clinic in Cleveland on um, East 112th and you. And oh, wow. I just fell in love with the whole idea, the, the career, the profession like you did. That's amazing, yeah. I never thought that I would end up in the field. It's, it's crazy how it all happened, but I'm, I'm really happy about where I am. <laughs> right. And did your mom, once you decided on dentistry, was she disappointed or did she encourage um, she you? She was happy because there was a period in time where I thought I didn't want to be a doctor at all, so I was thinking international business, and she kind of just always wanted me to go in the medical field, so she was kind of happy that I found my way back into it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and she thought she said the same thing. She echoed that you know it's a great profession. And it's funny you mentioned that a radiologist said that to you about going into dentistry over medicine because my brother's a radiologist, and oh. when he was interviewing at a bunch of different schools, and he would tell them like my brother's in dental school, um, he said that he had the same exact experience. So they would say, "Well, you messed up. Uh, oh. <laughs> you should have went to dental school. You can still step <laughs> back out now." <laughs> I think we <laughs> actually picked time. right. I really do, <laughs> didn't we? There was a time when, you know, being a doctor was everything, but now the way insurance companies have controlled them, 
they yeah. don't have the livelihood. They don't have the lifestyle that they used to. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, it's a very demanding career. Seeing my mom, you know, growing up with her, seeing how much she worked to do was. I mean, I do appreciate you know hard work ethic, but she was just you know not not stop on call. Right. Always going in you know, on Saturdays, and she would wake up, you know, yeah. crack of dawn. So it just seemed you know very very demanding, and I. And for something demanding for something I wasn't that passionate about, but then you know I found the passion. Yeah, I actually started working. That's real industry. cool. Now I bet another question you get asked a lot is the origin of your name Pagano. But I'm gonna have you hold that thought until we go to a break. <laughs> actually, what we're gonna do is Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. And <laughs> so for those of you, I've reminded you at the beginning that we're gonna do this. You're gonna have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. But I always try to make the questions simple. Okay. And so it's probably going to be something like what did Dr. Pagano's mother do for a living? How about that? We'll just make it that. But anyway, before we do the contest, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kabitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kabitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, and as I mentioned, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. So remember, the phone number, 614-459-9769. Okay, here's the question. Today we're introducing you to my new associate, dentist Dr. Mark Pagano. What did his mom do for a living? A, she was a doctor. B, she was a dentist. C, she worked in international business. D, she was a pharmacist. All right, which one of those was she? A, B, C, or D. All right, the winner's going to receive those free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko & Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavicko & Associates today, 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, and we have callers on the line. So, Dr. Pagano, would you do me a favor? Would you please pick a number between 1 and 4? 
Uh, I'm going to go with number two. Lucky number two. Okay, so we're going to go to caller number two. All right, and caller number two was Lisa. She had the correct answer, Lisa, from Grove City, but uh, we actually lost her, so we're not able to talk to her on the air. But, Lisa, congratulations. For those of you that didn't win today, please call back next week. Waiting for the producer. So, congratulations okay. to our winner, and for those of you who didn't win, please call again next week. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 619 of The Reasons We Smile, and we are celebrating the fact that we have a new associate. We are welcoming him to the practice. He won't be starting until December 2nd, but I have him on the phone with me right now. And for those of you that didn't listen in at the beginning of the show, his name is Dr. Mark Pagano, and he's from the Canfield area of Ohio. And uh, as you just learned, his mother was a physician. And if you were listening, his brother is a physician, a radiologist. And so we were talking before the break. We wanted to find out, Dr. Pagano, what is the origin of your name? What is where's, Where does Pagano emanate from? Uh, that's funny. So if you do a literal translation of it, it's Italian. Because that's my dad's side of the family. They're all 100% Italian from New Jersey. If you do a literal translation of it, it means they pay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like if, uh, mafia? Mafia? Or, that's what they would see, yeah, Pagano. Yeah, but I've also heard other people say that the root comes from the word pagan as well. Oh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I like to normally tell people the, they pay one, but it's kind of fun to also you know, throw the pagan one in there as well. So how do you pronounce it? Am I saying it wrong? Pagano. Yeah. I am saying it right. Okay, but the yeah. Pagano was pay, right? Yeah, it's interesting. They put, people, when we were younger, used to pronounce it differently when they would say my brother's name. I'm not sure why, but they used to call me Mark Pagano, but it's Pagano. It's Pagano. It okay. It should be. Yeah. I'm glad I'm pronouncing it correctly because you hadn't corrected me yet, and I thought, hmm, he's just yeah. being polite, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to hearing both, I think, so they kind of both sound right to me. Cool. So now you went to undergrad at Ohio State University as well as College of Dentistry? Yes, I did, yeah. So okay. I was a student for eight years straight at Ohio State. Wow. Wow, so you're really into the Buckeyes? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> it's impossible to live here and not be. <laughs> that was quite <laughs> a game yesterday, wasn't it? Schools. Oh, yeah. Even, even the people that come from other schools, they end up liking them eventually. Okay. Yeah, I'll, tell, I'll have to tell you, I was a little resistant at first. I didn't wear Buckeye gear. I didn't wear Buckeye jacket or hat or anything because I wasn't from here. I was from Cleveland, uh, Cleveland area, Twinsburg. Grew up uh, rooting for the Browns. I still root for the Browns. It's very painful, but I still root for them. <laughs> I root for the Indians and the Cavs, and, but it just grows on you. You know, I taught at the dental school for 20 years, and before that, I was a dental student. So, yeah, after all that time, you just kind of, it just does grow on you. Yeah, if you're not a Buckeye fan at first, you become a Buckeye fan. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm basketball and football. Yeah, I'm right, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we talked about the origin of your name, and we talked about why uh, or how you became a dentist. So once you started dental school, how long before you realized you had made the right choice? Because the first couple of years, there's not a lot of dental going on. It's mostly uh, embryology and histology and gross anatomy and all of that. Ooh, when I realized I made the right choice. Yeah? Mm, yeah, probably when we actually started working on patients. But I truly didn't mind the first two years too much. I, I don't know why. I like, I'm a book kind of guy. I like putting my head in the book and, you know, trying to do well on an exam. So when, you know, the first couple of years that's heavy on the books, I really, in a weird way, enjoyed it. But, yeah, I, I would say the first time I worked on a patient, that's when I kind of felt like I was in the right spot. Okay. Sure. And now if it was like it was when I went to dental school, did you guys have to practice numbing for the first time on each other? Yes, we did. Yeah, of course. So you didn't yeah, mention yeah. that, though, did you? You didn't mention that. That doesn't count, uh, right? <laughs> Yeah, and we did like the whole round of shots, so we left with like an entire mouth that was numb. But honestly, I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. I can handle it. <laughs> so I'll tell you, my experience was this, and I have to, I can't swear on the radio, so I'll have to stop myself. But so I numbed my partner, and they seat you alphabetically. Did they do that for you, too? I actually think that we got to Move pick around? our partners, I think, if I remember correctly. Okay, well, we didn't get to pick our partners. Our partner was picked for us, and my partner had a nickname La Bong. <laughs> La Bong, right? So go figure, when he puts the needle in me, no sooner does he put it in, and he goes, oh, shh, blood. That was my attempt to edit. You get the idea, right? 
right, right, right. And I'm like, oh, blood? <laughs> I can't, I can't say a word because my mouth is open and he's got the needle in me, and I know it's his very first time, and now he's gotten into a vessel. And <laughs> my eyes, I'm sure, got bigger than the lights that were on the ceiling, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually had a similar experience happen to me, and the oral surgery resident said, um, I remember him saying, like, that's okay. Uh, if you see the blood, that means you're in the right spot. Oh, really? Uh, of course, yeah, Which is not you true. Have to, you have to recorrect the needle a little bit. But I remember him saying that, and I was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because veins, arteries, and nerves travel together, so he's right about that, but uh, not necessarily what you want to do. You don't want to be, you can inject it into a vessel. The person will start you know, yeah, to make course, their heart yeah. beat I fast. I and... reposition. <laughs> yeah. So, no, it's nice to hear, and I think our patients are going to be happy to hear that you developed a passion for this before you even went to dental school, and that you continued all through dental school and now out in practice. And so, you graduated in 2018, is it? Yes, Okay, correct. 2018, so you've been out practicing for a while. We're going to yep. learn a little bit about that when we come back from our next break. So, okay. you can hang with us, right? Yep. Oh, I know what we wanted to do, and I can, I'll postpone the break. Yeah, I wanted to explain why you're on the phone instead of in the studio. And the reason is, is your birthday was a few days ago, and you're in New York City to celebrate, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. And you turned, what, 48? Uh, <laughs> yeah, 28, <laughs> yeah. I figured while I'm between jobs, waiting to start up there, I would have a nice little trip to New York before uh, for my birthday. My roommate, actually, I've known her for 17 years now, and she's a lawyer, and we have birthdays right around the same time, so we always try to do a little something fun for it. So what is it? Some, some old friends in New York, it's a good time. Okay. Did you do the driving thing or the flying thing? Ah, uh, flying. Yeah. Flying, I did okay. the driving thing while I was in dental school, and... I'm never doing that again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you drove because you had to, and now you don't have to. You can fly, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, well, that's good. After being in New York is not fun. I bet. Yeah, I've been there. I've driven there, and uh, and I've you know just been there, and it's definitely a different world. It's a different, yes. you know. Pedestrians get the right of way, don't they? Yes, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and they know they have the right of way, so they'll, they'll take that to their advantage. And I, I'll tell you what, tell me if I'm wrong, but the difference between New York City drivers and Columbus drivers is New York City drivers think their horn is the first thing they need to hit, right? <laughs> yeah. And in Columbus, we hit the brake. The brake is the first. <laughs> yeah, in Columbus, we hit the brakes. We don't even yeah. toot our horn. It's like, okay, we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, correct on that for sure. <laughs> so I know some of my patients are going to say, oh, he's just a young one, he's just a boy, but um, but you know what, 28, obviously you've been to school for a long, long time, and you've been out in practice, so it's going to be good to have uh, yeah. younger blood, and maybe I can learn some things from you, and you can learn some things from me, right? Yeah, of course. And so now I am way past time to go to a break. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. It's episode 619, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> Okay, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode number 619. Thank you so much for joining me. I have with me on the phone 
my new associate, Dr. Mark Pagano, even though he's in New York City, right? Yes, there we go. Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, hope things are going well, and I hope you make it back safe and all that, because you only have one more week at the other place before you join us on December 2nd. So now that you've been a dentist for a year and a half, tell me what was the biggest difference that you found from what you thought it would be like and what it was like in dental school. So in dental school, you did you worked on patients for a good two years before graduating, right? Yeah. Okay. And then when you got out in the real world, what were the differences that you experienced? I would say probably the biggest shock for me was truly how you can personalize your own career as a dentist and how many different ways you can go with it. How You know, like there's a lot of dentists that do different procedures while others don't. And you can truly make your own brand very distinct from somebody else's. It's kind of crazy how many tools are out there. I, like people truly don't understand, you know, how many different gadgets that we can play with. And it's truly a huge open world. In dental school, you know, we're kind of confined to the procedures that they're trying to teach us and how the professors want to do it. But once you leave... Yeah, um, that's a good point. You can, you can experience, you can delve into a lot of other things that other practitioners are doing, right? So yeah, one yeah, would be sleep yeah. dentistry, making sleep appliances. That would be one. One would be placing implants. Another might be focusing on smile makeovers, which they yeah. don't really teach in dental school, do they? They teach yeah. you what good yeah, aesthetics I are. I mean, even a lot of dentists can dip into orthodontics, too, which a lot of people don't understand going into dentistry or just patients in general that your dentist can also put braces on you as well and, and do a good job. Exactly, and I, I've been doing that... I, I think since 2007, and, and you've seen the results, right? They come out nice. Yeah, no, I was truly amazed by the results. <laughs> I think my mouth was, was open quite a few times when you tell me before and after. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to, oh, and there's something that you're going to be able to offer that I'm not yet offering, and that's uh, Botox, right? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so I got certified last February. Me and a friend went in. We just heard something that a lot of dentists actually do that, again, a lot of people don't know that your dentist can give Botox, but we give uh, just as good as the next person does. So, yeah, we took a, a CE course on it that was a full day, and it's actually a pretty easy procedure to administer. <laughs> a lot of people think it's hard, but it's pretty straightforward, and, you know, you get to see some great results and people are really happy about the results as well too so yeah it's a fun I've, little extra thing to do right and i've been asked by several of my patients because i do cosmetic makeovers is, is um, do you also offer botox and I said, no, I've been thinking about it, and I'll tell you what, I had some training about 15 years ago, and I thought I could have come back to the office and started doing it, but at that time, I was thinking the dental board might frown on it. Well, that's changed. Now the dental board, not only do they know we do it, but they have ADA codes for it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Yeah. And so tell me about some of the reasons you might do Botox. Obviously, the cosmetic reason, but it's also for what, migraines? Uh, yeah. You can also use it for migraines, and you can also use it to get rid of grinding, which a lot of people don't know that Botox can actually, you know, kind of solve that issue. They say that, they, I think they said that like around 70 to 80 percent of grinding is actually related to the muscles that open and close your mouth. And so what the Botox does is it kind of neutralizes that muscle so that you're not grinding a little bit. They say it helps solve about, you have about 70 to 80 percent of cases, but the thing is you have to keep coming back again for more Botox once it wears off. But is it every three months or every six? Every three months, but the great thing about being a regular customer is that the more you use it, the longer it lasts. Oh, you know, somebody's okay. Somebody's using it, you know, every three months for two years, they might start having the Botox reverse after four months or five months, but they kind of progress in their use of Botox. So. Okay, so they could potentially get almost to the to the point where if they came every five months instead of six, they could get their teeth cleaned, examined, and x-rayed, and Botox. Yeah, and the Botox, yeah. <laughs> Just throw that into the routine exam. <laughs> now, it also works for TMJ pain, right? Yep, for TMJ pain as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of functional uses. Um, that a lot of people don't really know. Right. There's a lot of myths going around about Botox. That people think that it won't change how your face looks, but it truly doesn't unless it's done poorly. Anything that's done right as it should be, you can get the good aesthetic look without any change to how your face actually you know, looks. You'll still look like yourself. Right. The biggest change people are seeing and maybe equating this to is when people have uh, lip injections, right? They have a collagen yeah. injections. That's That'll change your face. What the Botox simply does is take away the crow's feet, takes away the wrinkles on your forehead, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. yep. Wrinkles around your lip. And then you can even do it around your eye a little bit too. Yeah, like even under the eye. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of different uses for it. So. It's okay. cool. I think that, I believe they're also using it now um, to inject into people's armpits to be able to stop them from sweating, too. Oh, wow. I'll be darned. Interesting. <laughs> huh. 
Okay. <laughs> well, that, I'm, in a, I'm interested to learn more about that as well. I might even have you do it on me, so I don't, so I don't look like, my, so I look like your age. <laughs> so, anyway, well, hey, Dr. Pekan, I'm looking at the clock. My producer is kind of waving at me like it's time for us to wind down for this visit, of this um, this version of the show. We want to have you on many times to uh, give people a chance to get to know you better, and uh-huh. hopefully to be looking forward to seeing you when they come. We're going to give people a choice of do they want to see me, do they want to see you, but a lot of people like going to a dentist who's right out of dental school or not, you're not right out, year and a half, but they think you know, you're younger and so you're probably up on the latest and greatest, so hopefully that's what they will find when they get there, right? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> Patients seem to like me, so. <laughs> that's good, that's good. He's got a great personality, folks. You're going to love him. So, all right, Dr. Pagano, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your busy weekend, your birthday weekend, uh, to talk with us. And, uh, thank you. No, it was awesome. Thanks for uh, putting me on a radio show. I've never been on air before, so it feels good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, well, thanks again, and you have a great day, and we will see you on December 2nd. Awesome. Thank you so much, Doc. You're that's- very welcome. That's all the time we have. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kvitko and visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kvitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. 9588 or send an email to speaking at the reasons we smile.com. WSNYFM WS.